You're going to be melting marbles at the conference? Jack wants not to. Not me. I, Jack might do it. Jack right. wants to get He's the garage, sure. garage set up just the way it was in 62 with marbles. Are there marbles available? Yeah. Yeah, you can get them. Oh. I found some. I have a plastic bucket of them at the studio. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a start. Can you tell them about your experience with the marbles in Mount Vernon when we came back from Seattle? Yeah, I went out to Seattle for a year and we rented our house and I told the fellow, the <clears throat> colleague from the philosophy department that I had to leave the garage unlocked for some reason the, the day we were leaving studio. the studio mm -hmm. and said lock it up after I've left so that nobody gets in there and disturbs anything. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't pay attention to me and the local cop uh, got complaints from various stores in town that they were noticing these somebody's putting holes, little tiny round holes in their windows. <laughs> and <clears throat> Lumber Yard had some holes in their windows and some and stores. Every window was uh, some windows downtown had holes in the windows. And so he's looking around being a good detective and at the hardware store he noticed these marbles about this big around kind of blue green marbles. And he said, where have I seen those before? So he's thinking a while if I realized it was my over there we'll on call it. Second Avenue North. <laughs> <laughs> he came over and I think he just opened the door to the garage and went in and there was a 55 gallon oil drum of marbles. <laughs> and he got all of the philosopher and said, lock that place up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a riot. <clears throat> yeah, they're the perfect size and weight yep. for slingshots. Amazing. There was another funny story coming back from Seattle that, remember you packed up all your furnace, your furnace and that, Yeah, I brought back, well, I, I took a furnace when I went, when I, I got a grant to go back and study art history for a year at the University of Washington mm -hmm. in 1966, after the, the fall of 66. And Harvey had told me that Russ Day up at Everett Junior College really would love to see somebody build a studio for him at the college. So Harvey suggests you ought to take a furnace and every equipment mm -hmm. out with you. Mm -hmm. So I did. We rented a trailer behind our van and it had the furnace and a kneeling oven bench and everything. And that's when I learned to blow glass. Uh, Russ was wonderful. He gave me, he let me blow there as much as I wanted. Wow. No charge. Uh, I was supposed to teach him how to blow glass. Yeah. And he had never had time until finally Christmas vacation came. And so then he, I got him down to the studio and we blew two days and he said, I'm not strong enough for this. Oh my. And didn't blow anymore. Huh. So it was too much work. Yeah. And where was the furnace set up? In the welding shop oh. under a welding hood. Of the uh, community college? Yeah. Everett Community? Yeah. I'll be darned. And I, I blew 20 and hours 66. a week. 66. 66, 67, I blew yeah. from October, I probably had it up and running in October, and I was, I would drive, get up, and we lived halfway between Everett and Mount, no, what was it? Linwood. 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 Uh, halfway between Seattle, the campus, and Everett. Mm -hmm. So I'd get up in the morning, go drive down for classes. Mm -hmm. As soon as my class was over, I'd turn around and drive to Everett. That was 60 miles. Right and blow glass till evening and then drive back and then home. Go home and then Saturdays Sundays I'd get up there I think a lot of Saturdays I was there all day mm -hmm. and by the end of the year I was an accomplished glass blower yeah. so we packed up to go home and I made the mistake well we had to get everything back into the trailer and so I was looking for every available space that I could find and mm -hmm. put things in, mm -hmm. put them away we got back home and I discovered I didn't have any underwear. No t-shirts, no shorts, no socks. For a month. For a month. You didn't have any. Could not find any of this. So somehow we got lost. And we did 
have trouble with the trailer because I packed it. As things were put in boxes, they went in the trailer. And I never took it back out and sorted it by weight. Yeah. And there was no weight on the tongue of the trailer. Huh. And it started whipping back and forth up in Canada. Uh -huh. We went through the Canadian Rockies. And so we stopped at a way station uh, where they have the scales. Uh -huh. And the guy waited. He said, oh, you've got to go back and go over to the parking lot, take everything out, put the heavy stuff in front, the light in back. And so <clears throat> we had everything out in the parking lot. And I thought, we've left a box of underwear in that parking lot. Oh, <laughs> Well, <clears throat> finally, after we'd been home for two or three months, I finally got out and started up the furnace. I opened the kneeling oven. There's a box of underwear. <laughs> Inside the oven. <laughs> Inside the oven. <laughs> it you, were using all the, perfect, you were using all the spaces. Just perfect fit. <laughs> <laughs> So now I have two complete supplies. Yeah, yeah. You haven't had to buy underwear since, right? <laughs>